Good day, guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Minecraft clone called Classic Cube for Arc OS on the R36S. We'll be covering how to install it on the device itself with internet access, but also manually on a Windows computer and copying the files over. As always, we'll be using a fresh install of the latest version of Arc OS, which at the time of filming is the February 9th build. Let's get into it. To install it on the device using Portmaster, we will need internet access on the R36S. You can use USB Wi-Fi or Ethernet adapters, but I'll just be tethering it to my Android phone over USB. It's going to plug one end of my USB-C cable into the OTG port, which is the right-hand USB-C port on the R36S. And then on my Android phone, I'll just select USB tethering. With that done, we'll go down to Options, go down to Tools, and run Portmaster. This is the first time we've run it, so we will need to download and install the files first. If this is the first time opening Portmaster, select Yes to download it now. Click OK. Go back down to Tools and Portmaster. Press A to upgrade. Once it's finished installing, press OK. After waiting 15 seconds for the disclaimer, press A to accept. From here, we'll go down to All Ports and we'll scroll all the way down to Classic Cube. You can press R2 to scroll pages. Press A to show info and press A again to install. Make sure you do have enough free space when installing, otherwise it will fail to install and you'll have to manually delete the files to try again. Once it's finished, press OK. Press B to go back and go down to exit. Go over to our ports folder and run Classic Cube. The first time running Classic Cube, it'll mention that you will need to download additional game files. Once again, you will need internet access on your R36S. Simply press down to select yes and press start. On this page, we will just be using single player. So press down to highlight single player. Press start once again. To manually install it without requiring internet access on the R36S itself, we will need to download a few files on our Windows computer connected to the internet. Just going to Google, typing in Portmaster, going to the top link, portmaster.games. At the top, select games. In the search bar, type in Classic Cube. And we can see the top result, Classic Cube. Click on that. We want to scroll down and click download. If we scroll down a little further, it will tell us the files we need to copy over. It says we'll need to install Classic Cube on our PC and copy both the audio and text packs folders to the port directory. Going back to Google, typing in Classic Cube. Click on the top result, classiccube.net. On the right hand side, under downloads, we want to click Windows 64-bit. If you only have a 32-bit machine, click See All Downloads and select Windows 32-bit. Once both files are finished downloading, we can close off Chrome. Over in our downloads folder, we should have two zip files. The first Classic Cube zip file should be our ports files. We want to right click on it and extract it. I'll be using 7-zip, but you can use your archiver of choice. The second Classic Cube zip file should be the Windows installer. Once again, we'll extract that. We want to open up our Windows installer folder, which for me is Classic Cube brackets 1. Open up the second folder and run classiccube.exe. It'll mention it's installing the font cache and it can take several seconds. Click OK. And it'll mention it needs to download additional files. Click yes. Once it's finished downloading, we can close Classic Cube. Inside the Windows installer folder, you should see audio and text packs folders. We want to copy both of those folders to our Portmaster folder. Just highlighting them both and Control C. Go back to our downloads folder, open up our Classic Cube ports folder, which for me is just called Classic Cube. Open up Classic Cube again, and I want to paste it in here. With that done, just putting the SD card from my R36S into my USB SD card reader, and I'll pop it into my computer. If it asks you to format, make sure you click cancel. Going back to our downloads folder, we want to open up our Classic Cube ports folder, and we want to copy the Classic Cube folder from inside here, as well as our Classic Cube.sh script. Highlighting them both, pressing Control C. Going over to our EasyROMs folder on our micro SD card. If the EasyROMs folder isn't showing up, you may need to manually assign a drive letter in disk management. I will link a short video I've made down below covering that. Inside EasyROMs, we want to scroll down to the ports folder and we'll paste our Classic Cube files. That's all there is to it. We'll safely eject our SD card and put it back into our R36S. Back on our R36S, we should be able to scroll down and we should now see a ports folder. Open that up. Inside we should see Classic Cube. Simply open that up. Ignore the login field since we don't have internet access on the R36S at the moment. And just press down until you highlight single player and click start. You should now be in the game. The controls are pretty intuitive. The left joystick moves around and the right joystick looks around. A jumps, B toggles fly on and off. X opens up the bricks menu. L2 and R2 changes the currently selected brick. With fly mode on, 
A flies up and B flies down. It does seem to be running at a constant 60 frames a second, or 59 frames as you can see on the top left, which is pretty cool. The default game world is quite small, but you can press select to bring up the in-game menu, go over to generate new level, press start, and here you can change the width, height, and length. If you do set the numbers too high, it can take quite a while to generate. Pressing select again closes out of the menu. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way to change it over to survival mode, so you are stuck in creative mode. I'm not too familiar with Minecraft, so if you do find a way, please let me know in the comments below. To exit out of Classic Cube, simply hold FN and press start. I think next we'll try it on our R36S clone, running the custom build of Arc OS. We're back on our Windows 10 computer, and I'm just inserting the SD card with Arc OS for the R36S clones into my SD reader, and I'll pop it into the computer. Once again, we're gonna open up our Classic Cube ports folder, which we created previously, and we're gonna copy the Classic Cube files. We'll go over to our EasyRealms folder, go down to ports, and we will paste it in here. With that done, we'll safely eject our SD card and put it back into our R36S clone. Over on our R36S clone now, we put the SD card back in, and it has booted into our custom Arc OS build. It's gonna scroll up to ports and open Classic Cube. So it does bring us to the same main menu, which is a good sign. We'll press up and select single player, press start. And unfortunately it does crash there and go back to the main ports menu. We'll open it up once more and see if we can change any settings. Pressing up, going to options, going to mode, and we'll select classic and see if that helps. Go back up to single player, and unfortunately it does crash again. It looks like out of the box classic cube does not run correctly on the current custom build of Arc OS for the R36S clones. I will keep my eye on it and be sure to test any changes in the future. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.